Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Go player. In this video, we're going to be looking at a force zone game against Rick Rubenstein. So Rick is one of my supporters at Patreon. At Patreon, you can donate to support my channel and help me continue to put out videos like this. For anyone interested, there is a link in the video description. Thank you to all of my supporters. In this game, we will be looking at a double Kakari towards the star point. So that will be uh, this position in the lower left corner. And also we will be looking at middle game 33 point invasions. So that will be the upper left corner here and the upper right corner here. So this these two invasions, I'm going to be discussing ways that black can handle invasions like this. So to get started, I, I'll show you a graph first. So um, it's getting to be a thing with me. So the green line is the winning percentage and the pink line is the score or the point score of the game. So you can see black starts with a, a large lead. And if we follow the pink line, the uh, territory is getting uh, gradually closer and closer until a decisive point in the game where it crosses below the 50% line. And the green line is close to 100% for black until black plays the final mistake. It probably lost something like five points, but um, it falls off the cliff. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you just look at the green line, um, you're going to focus on that one decisive point. But the left half of this graph um, actually holds a number of important lessons. So actually, early parts of the game, you will be in positions that will probably happen again. And so those are the positions that you can learn from and try not to make the same mistake again. Okay, so getting started now. Black kicked and played a pincer. So this is a standard way to punish white for playing away, as white did. And in the upper right area, black has a, a nice attack going. So black's pincer here, it's not only a pincer taking away the base from the two white stones, it is starting to build a black territory on the right side. So a very effective move. White plays a double kakari. Black plays an attachment and extends. So this is probably the joseki that you want to remember. And white has a number of choices at this point. In the game, I played an attachment here. This has become the most popular move after we started researching with computer programs. So, for instance, if white jumps into the 3-3 point, black can cover here. And when white connects underneath like this, and black can cut the one stone off like this, this is almost always good for black. So, black should feel satisfied with this strong position where black has captured the one stone on the third line and has a very strong position. So, uh, I played the attachment here, and black covered on the 3-3 point and white connected. So there's a number of variations here. Um, in this video, I'm just gonna focus on this one. So black plays here and white plays here, asking what black is going to do about the cut at e4. And so a very important thing about this joseki is that if black ends up playing a move something like this, this move is not doing anything apart from just connecting. So it's a very unhappy move. It's, it's not a move that is very useful. So black will want to try to avoid this move. And also, in the game black jumped here, which is actually a very good move, I advise for black to play here. When black plays this, some people might be a bit worried about the cut here. It's what we call a dominant cut. White is not getting any points by cutting here, so it's a pointless move in a way. And also, it's filling white's own liberty. So uh, when black cuts here, this is already going to be trouble for white. And black has already gotten a lot out of this. So even if black ends up losing the corner, this is going to be okay. The corner is actually going to be, it's going to be a call. So for instance, if this happens, now white has a living shape on the bottom. And if black plays here, uh, this is one of the life and death problems that I put out. So uh, white can make a co out of it. But this is okay for black. It's okay for it to be a co. 
So the bottom line is that uh, pushing through and cutting for white is almost always a bad move. And it's very difficult to kill black in the corner. And so black playing on the outside, trying to avoid having to connect up on the fourth line is a good move. This is also good because it's setting up two pincers that are Mia. So for instance, with this move, black could have pincered here, in which case white would play here and would be putting pressure on the black group in the corner. Or black could play here, and this would heat things up a little bit too. So black has these two pincers and is making Mii of them, interchangeable points of them, by playing here. So that's one of the reasons this is good. Also, by making these stones in the center healthy, by adding a stone towards the center, black has reduced the threat here. So in this joseki, uh, black doesn't want to connect uh, to the corner too early, and white will try to force black to play that dame point to connect up. So uh, that's the biggest issue in this joseki, and therefore it's a very effective move for black to be strengthening the outside group because the corner group is pretty stable as it is. So I like this move. And now white plays an extension on the left side. Uh, I'm going to say in the game black played away. Uh, this is a big point in the upper right, but I'm going to say black should have pincered here. So when black pincers here, for instance, if white pushes, then again, uh, this stone that black played at f7 is working very well. It's creating a, a hanging connection and making it very difficult for white to move out in the center. So, for instance, if white does something like this, this would be a very painful shape if white were to um, play here, and black would just continue, maybe, maybe with something like this, um, or black could play on the top. And this is going to be a difficult fight for white. Black jumped and played here. So this is a standard way of reinforcing against the 3-3 points. So basically, if white plays here and crawls, in this shape, this stone is protecting against the cut on the fourth line. So not only is black moving towards the top side to make a territory there, black is also getting rid of this potential weakness in, in the corner. So white played away. Black kicks and plays a nice move again. And finally, I played here. Black played here. So this is a reasonable move. Um, again, Black doesn't really want to be playing the Dame point here. So a move like this or a move like this, it would be a bit painful. So playing here would be slightly better maybe. But instead, Black plays here, making what I would call pretty much a living shape in the corner. And so if black is alive in the corner, it doesn't matter if white pushes through and cuts. Again, pushing through at this point, um, provided black lives on both sides, this is just going to be a wasted move. So since black is already alive, more or less, in the corner, all, all black would have to do was, would be to strengthen the center. And so it's not going to be an issue for black. So this was really good. So black's handled the game fairly well up to this point. Okay, so black has started to attack white in the upper right. And this is okay. So uh, white is trying to get something on the bottom side of the board. And so it makes sense that black plays here. This is a multi-purpose move where black is, uh, for one thing, black is moving in this direction to reduce white's potential area on the bottom side. Also, it's reinforcing these stones, so it's, this is an efficient way of protecting these stones so that black doesn't have to connect up to the corner. So really, it is a wasted move if black ends up playing at d5, and black does want to try to avoid that by playing useful moves on the outside in order to strengthen that group. Okay, so the right side has become a black territory. I'd say that's close to 30 points. So one thing I've learned, you might say, by studying with computer programs like Kadago, is that they seem to be a bit indifferent about whether or not white lives in this corner. So I realize that my computer is not supposed to have emotions like that. 
but you might say that the da the data is making me think that maybe I should be having that feeling. The real point, the real issue is th that Black has to create a strong group on the outside. So in the game, Black played down. So playing down to the second line, when Black has a fairly strong position like he does in this case, is usually going to be a fairly good move. Even if White lives in the corner, Black will be reducing White's left side. And so it's the strongest reply, and it's a way for it's it's one way that Black can handle the three-three point. That said, I'm going to show you something that might be even more even better in that it simplifies the situation. So when Black plays here, and if White covers on the second line, then whether or not you want to play this way with Black, it depends on the ladder. So after Black plays here, it will depend on whether or not this ladder favors Black. So in this board position, cutting at C13, the ladder does favor Black. And this means that it's going to make White very busy with that weakness on the left side. So quite often, playing the Hane here at 1 is a good strategy that creates uh, this cut on the third line. So to continue with this, if white plays, um, white will usually play something like six in, in an attempt to live in the corner, but black will cut here. And this causes great problems, assuming the ladder is good for black. So this variation, it does depend on the ladder being advantageous for black. So for instance, if white pulls back here, Black will have, uh, just to keep things relatively simple, let's play this exchange first, and white would probably live in the corner, and black pushes. So after black pushes a few times, black can play here. This is going to cause trouble for white on the left side. So white can crawl indefinitely, or white can push through here, in which case black would be sacrificing the two stones and getting these four white stones in the same. So this would be good for black. Otherwise, if white keeps crawling, this is a bit painful. So in this variation, uh, black can, for instance, play something like this, play some defensive move in the center, and white still has a lot of problems here. So the left side, white doesn't have enough space to be alive yet. White really needs one more stone here, but white um, white has some trouble in on this side also. So this looks promising for black. So playing Hane here is a strategy that uh, heats up the left side and reduces black's problems in the corner because, because of that. So white actually might ig ignore it for the time being. This is a variation where white can live in the corner and eventually defend the left side. So white's defending this way because if white covers here, black has this forcing move against the corner and can cut after all. So in order to avoid getting cut there, white has played the corner sequence first and has finally jumped here. So this avoids that problem, but black does have the tempo to, to play one more move on the top making a nice territory there. So in this case, if we say the corner, the upper right corner is going to be black's territory, if we say that, it's uh, more than 30 points. So black has 30 points in the lower right area, more than 30 points on the top, a few points in the lower left, so that's close to 70 points. And so that's a lot of territory for black. White doesn't have enough territory to even be close to that now. So this is a clear win for black. Okay, so in the game, it is slightly more difficult. Obviously, white did need one more move. If we just look at it locally, white needed one more move here to have a living shape. So this would be alive. If black plays here, it's going to be dead. Let's see. So I might leave it for the time being, playing maybe here. But eventually, when white does play here, black will need to play another move here to uh, finish this off. So maybe here might be better for black to play once down here and play here. So this is a dead shape, but there is the potential that it will end up being a race to capture.
So Black will have to add some more stones to it at some point later in the game. So that's the idea of White uh, proposing to sacrifice this corner. So playing out here is okay. It's a big move. And White finally protects the corner. It's not really a big issue, provided the black group on the outside becomes strong. So the real focus of what's happening here is whether or not black can create a strong group on the outside. The corner territory, it was something like 15 points if black had made that corner. And so as far as territory is concerned, black is getting most of that back by being able to reduce the left side. And that means that black has not really lost very much territory. So black invades here. Uh, black played the connection immediately. Might have been better for black to, to wedge here, just to show this variation. So yeah, if white captures the one stone, and this is a ladder, so this is good for black. White connects, black can play down. This is a bit of a problem in the corner. Uh, with this move, this is forcing towards the corner, so black's going to have a coal here. Um, so this is a bit of a problem for white. So wedging might have been a stronger move. Black played safe here. In a handicap game, it's probably okay to play safe. Black plays all the peeps here. This is good. Yes. And black is going to use this peep as a kind of a strategy to strengthen uh, his group in the upper left. So this is working uh, fine for black. So in this whole sequence, Black is connected up to these stones in the lower left. So has created a kind of a wall here. And this whole group is pretty healthy now. I would say it's a fairly strong group. And you can see how White's territory disappeared in this sequence. And that whole area on the left side of the board, it's just, it's basically, it's just two eyes now. So White plays here to get the one eye. And white has white has an eye capturing that black stone. Okay, black connected. This was a slightly slack move. It would have been better for black to play a bit more actively. Maybe connecting once and then playing a peep or something. Uh, white's peep on the left, it was a bit of an overplay probably. And black can counterattack with something like this. Okay, so now we get to the next 3-3 three, three point. In the upper left corner, I showed black playing a hane on the second line. So this is something that you can consider. Usually the idea is that black is going to get more on, on the side and is going to allow white to live in the corner. So it wasn't even necessary in this case. Playing here was fine. White plays here, black pulled back, and white does not have enough room to live in the corner. So I played here. Actually, black could have killed it with this move. In the game, black covered here. This exchange allowing white to live in the corner Better not play. So if black doesn't want to go after it immediately, uh, black can play safe and connect to the side first. And that would also be a, a fairly big move. And so it was probably a bad exchange to allow white to live in the corner. But if we look at the overall position, white has a few points in the two corners on the top side, so that's close to 10 points. White has a few points on the left side, so let's call that uh, 15 points for these three territories, so about five points each here. And then white has this territory on the lower side, which also is not so impressive. So white maybe has, if we call this about 20 points, that adds up to about 35 points. Okay, so looking at the black territory, uh, this is uh, with the extra territory that black is getting here, this is getting close to 35 points. So it's over 30 points. Black has a few points in the corner, Black has a very strong group here. I'd add about five points for that. And black, well, these areas, if, um, they're, they're more black territory than they will be white territory. So I would probably add about five points for that thickness. Five, 10, 15. Um, I'd say black has about 50 points. So black is maybe about 15 points ahead, plus the fact that white is a bit thin throughout the board position. So for instance, this white group um, it's not really established a life yet. And so white has to worry a bit about all those loose connections that I have.
Okay, so white starts to surround the lower side. And black immediately plays this endgame. This is a big endgame move. It was well timed for black to play it now. So here black is just making sure that the corner is alive. Another worthwhile move. And pushing this white group around a bit. And yes, black is playing a very safe move here. Uh, this is where the territory is gradually getting closer. Uh, but I don't really blame the computer for giving black close to 100% winning percentage. Because black does have a, a safe lead here. So let's just go through the final stages of the game. Black does have a solid lead. We'll just look at the decisive point where it got turned around. Okay, so this move was a slight mistake, but it'll, it'll take a bit of time to, to get to the explanation here. So I'll start with uh, the left part of this white territory. So this white territory, uh, there's some weaknesses in it. And the optimal way to take advantage of that is to start with this. So after playing this exchange, black will play here. So to demonstrate what the exchange of one for two was for, it works when white plays here, and black bumps against uh, white here. Black was setting up a double Atari. So in this case, black would have a double Atari here. Um, because black played that exchange of one for two. So it might be slightly different if black had not played that exchange. It would be more complicated in execution. So black should start with one and two. And uh, in this variation, it's actually very difficult for white to surround the territory. So if white pulls back here, black still has a peep here. So this peep um, can connect up if black plays here. So for instance, if white plays here, black can connect up this way. If white plays a move like this or like this, in either case, black can connect up with this. This, this is going to connect up, and white does still have to be a bit careful of this group here, which um, is, maybe it has two eyes, but it's, it's a bit tricky. And so black could have uh, erased the whole area here in the center. This would have, would have probably been close to 10 points difference if black had done so. So in the game, black starts with this and plays here. So still it was good, a good idea for black to play this end game. It is going to be a white territory now um, due to the fact that black started with this. So it was better for black not to have that exchange in. And black is still ahead. So even after this, um, black didn't really need to do that. Uh, this was a uh, winning sequence. So playing one is actually a fairly important move. It reduced the upper side. In some cases, it's going to reduce it to, to two eyes. So for instance, if black at some point plays the honey here, um, then we can see that the white territory is going to start to look, um, it's going to look something like this, where white has two eyes, but has only three points of territory there. So this is uh, how the white territory can shrink if black does play that move at one. So in the game, by not playing that, and white eventually got to that point, White actually ended up getting about 8 points in that upper left corner. So that was a surprisingly um, big move for White to be playing at B16. And it was a forcing move if Black had played the slide at A17. So it was here where the, the game was maybe turned around. And White ended up winning this game. But on the whole, I'd say it was a, a well-played game for, for Black. And I don't really blame Kadabo for giving Black 100% throughout most of the game. In this game, I took a look at the double Kakari here in the lower left corner and also the three three-point invasion. So th those were the three points of this video that I think people should learn something from. Thank you for watching to then, and I hope to see you next time.